Hey everybody, it's Andrea. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a book haul. So these are the books I bought in May, other than the ones that we saw in the box I got from eBay. So these are other ones that I got from the charity shop or eBay. The first one um, I'm going to show you, actually I got in April but I forgot to put it in the bag and that's Elantris by Brian, uh, Brandon Sanderson. I, when my brother was over, after my dad died, um, I asked Chris where to start with Brandon Sanderson because everybody's always banging on about how good he is and he said we'll start with Elantris, it's a, a standalone um, and it, it'll get you into his style of writing. Obviously it's changed because this is a very old book, it's one of his first, if not his first. Um, I do understand that he is going to be writing a sequel to Elantris at some point so Chris recommended to start with this and see how you get on and if you like, like it then to move on to something else and I will check with Chris uh, which to start with next because he is the fantasy writing expert. He has a library of over a thousand fantasy and sci-fi books. Sadly they're all in New Zealand now so I can't go and nick anything from there to read it. <laughs> Like I used to if I wanted something, if I was over at Mum's and I had nothing to read, I'd go up to Chris's library and steal something. Well, borrow it, I wouldn't steal it, obviously. He's like me though, he really looks after his books. So Elantris was a place of glory, the capital of Aelon. It was home to a people transformed into magic using demigods by the showered. I don't know how you pronounce this, if it's wrong I do apologise. Um, my other fantasy expert, Richard, is not here, that's my other brother. He again is also into books, we are a bookish family. But then the magic failed and Elantris started to rot and its inhabitants became powerless wrecks. In the new capital K, close enough, or Kai, close enough to Elantris to remind everyone what they have lost, a princess arrives ready to seal a political alliance with a wedding and unite Teod and Arlon against religious imperialists. But Roden, her husband-to-be, is dead. Still determined to fight for Teo and Arlen's freedom, Serene, clash Serene clashes with the High Priest Rathen, but secrets remain in Elantris. The dead and the ruined may yet have a role to play in this new world, because magic still lives. So yeah, so that's Elantris. I've got a second hand off of eBay. It has got some spine wear, but it's not too bad. I could have got a new copy, but you know, we try and do things cheaply here. I got Sebastian Fawkes a week in December. Now I have read Birdsong, which is obviously World War One, and I have Charlotte Grey, which is World War Two. This is more modern, um, and I loved Birdsong. So uh, let's have a look. London, the week before Christmas, 2007. Seven wintry days to track the lives of seven characters. A hedge fund manager trying to bring off the biggest trade of his career, a professional footballer recently arrived from Poland, a young lawyer with little work and too much time to speculate, a student who has been led astray by Islamist theory, a hack book reviewer, that's all of us, uh, a schoolboy hooked on skunk and reality TV, and a tube driver whose circle line train joins these and countless other lives together in a daily loop. With daring skill, the novel pieces together the complex patterns and crossings of modern urban life and the group is forced one by one to confront the true nature of the world they inhabit. Sweeping, satirical, Dickensian in scope, a week in December is a thrilling state of the nation novel from a master of literary fiction. So I haven't enjoyed one of his books, I've got two more to read. Uh, we've got A Secret Cornish Summer by Philippa Ashley, so this is like a cosy story, not a mystery but it's romance. <sighs> this beautiful Cornish summer there'll be sun, sea, sand and secrets. When Eden steps out of her idyllic coastal cottage to find a speedo wearing suntan stranger doing yoga in next door's garden, she immediately on her guard. Since her ex-husband betrayed her in the worst possible way, she's kept her distance from all men, taking refuge in her start-up coffee business. But as she gets to know Levin, uh, Eden begins to wonder if he might be different, until she discovers he's not quite what he seems. They never are. And when a long buried family secret surfaces, her faith in those she loves most is shaken to the core. As the secrets spill out, relationships old and new will be tested like never before. Can Eden learn to trust again and move past all the secrets of this Cornish summer? Anything to do with Cornwall, I'm going to love because it's one of my mum and dad's favourite places. I've got great memories of Cornwall. I picked up The Christmas Appeal by Janice Hallett. I did love The Alberton Angel. This is actually a hardback, um, and so it was 50p. <laughs> 50p and it's in pretty good condition somewhere into the cover what's the end papers like end papers like very nice though this obviously is probably not going to get read till christmas but i thought i have to have to get it while it's there um it's only blurbs on the back so let's have a look at what it's about so one dead santa a town full of suspects will you discover the truth 
Christmas in Noah Lockwood and the Fairway players are busy rehearsing their festive pantomime Jack and the Beanstalk to raise money for the church roof appeal. It's always for the church roof, there's always problems with the church roofs. But despite the season good of goodwill is distinct sorry, but blah blah blah. But despite the season, goodwill is distinctly lacking among the amateur dramatic enthusiasts. Sarah Jane is fending off threats to her new position as chair. The fiberglass beanstalk might be full of asbestos. And someone is intent on ruining the panto even before the, car the curtain goes up. There's also the matter of the dead body. Who could possibly have had the victim on their naughty list? Join lawyers Femi and Charlotte as they read the round robins, examine the emails and pour over the police transcripts. Will you discover the truth before they do and will the show go on? So again, this is written like Alpert and Angels from transcripts and emails, which I really enjoyed in the Alpert and Angels. So I'm really looking forward to this one. It's not going to take long. It's not a huge book. I could probably read this one in a day once, once we get there to Christmas. December. December, I'm going to pull everything with Christmas in the title or anything similar like the Christmas bookshop and such and such that I've got and um, I tend to do that every year and read Christmassy related books. Same as we like to colour Christmas related pictures in December don't we? And July apparently. Uh, Jodie Pico, wish you were here. I'm picking up these up as and when I see them because you know I've enjoyed a couple of reds so let's add a few more. Uh, Diana O'Toole's life is going perfectly to plan. So why does she still find herself wondering if there's a better way to live? At 29, she's up from promotion to her dream job as an art specialist at Sotheby's and she's about to fly to the Galapagos where she's convinced her surgeon boyfriend Finn is going to propose. But then the virus hits New York City, uh, New York City and Finn breaks the news. The hospital needs him, he has to stay, but you should still go, he insists. And reluctantly she, she agrees. Once she's in the Galapagos, the world shuts down around her, leaving Diana stranded with only intimate news from the outside world. Diana finds herself examining everything that has brought her to this point, but not everything is as it seems. Hmm. Yes, global pandemic, I wouldn't have been going anywhere. In fact, I didn't. Uh, another Jodie Pico I picked up was The Storyteller. I've heard this is good from what I've gathered. Uh, so this one is, for 70 years, Joseph Weber has been hiding in plain sight. He is a pillar of his local community. He is also a murderer. When Joseph decides to confess, he is to stage singer, a young woman who trusts him as her friend. What she hears shatters everything she thought she knew and believed. As Sage uncovers the truth from the darkest horrors of war, she must follow a twisting tale between terror and mercy, betrayal, forgiveness, love and revenge. So it sounds like he must have been involved in maybe um, the Nazi regime and Auschwitz or one of the concentration camps. I don't know. I haven't read it yet. So, but that one should be quite interesting. I imagine it could be quite harrowing. Um, so I'd have to be in the mood for that one, but you know, I, I'll get there. A um, couple of Marion Keys. I love Marion Keys. So again, I'm picking them up where I can, whether I've read them or not, because I want to start collecting the paperbacks. So this is Grown Ups. This is one I actually haven't read. Uh, so meet Jesse, Cara, Cara and Nell, married to brothers Johnny, Ed and Liam Casey. Three different women tied to three very different men. Every family occasion is a party until the day the secrets spill out. Playtime is over, but where are the grown-ups? Sounds good. I love Marion Keys. She's so such an easy read that even this will only take me a day or two to get through. So I've been reading Marion Keys for years. I love her writing. Uh, back to Jodie Pico, The Book of Two Ways. So every life has pivotal moments, choices that send you one, one path or another. But what have you had a chance to change the decisions you've made? Don't we all wonder about that though, don't we? Dawn helps people prepare for a good death. But when she finds herself in mortal danger, the life that flashes before her eyes is not the one she shares in Boston with her beloved husband and daughter, but the life she left behind in Egypt 15 years ago, a career in archaeology and a man she loved. Safe again, Dawn finds herself faced with an unexpected decision, to go back home to a world she knows or to try and recapture the world she lost. But is there a cost to turning back time? Don't we all wonder what would have happened if we'd made a decision differently? I always wonder what would have happened if my dad had decided not to sell the shop in Bristol and we'd stayed there. What would have happened? I probably wouldn't have Jennifer, I wouldn't have met Paul. And so on. So we all think about that. So that could be quite an interesting one. What else have we got? Uh, Marion Keys, The Break. Here's another one. This one finds a bit worse for wear, but it's not too bad. It'll do. Um, uh, let's have a look. Myself and Hugh, we're taking a break, a city with fancy food sort of break, if only. 
Amy's husband Hugh says he isn't leaving her. He still loves her. He's just taking a break from their marriage, their children and their life together. Six months to Southeast Asia and nothing she says can stop him. But when does a break become a break up? It's enough to send Amy and her family of gossips, misfits and troublemakers teetering over the edge. When Hugh returns, if he returns, will he be the same man she married? Will Amy be the same woman? Because if Hugh is on the break from their marriage, then isn't she on one too? Now we've got this one. I think I picked up because it's the sort of thing that Mum loves. Oh no, it's Vanity Fair. This is one that Sally bought to read and she hasn't read it. It's perfect condition almost from the charity shop. Um, but she says it's unlikely she's going to get to it anytime soon. I said, I'm not going to get to it anytime soon. I'm reading War and Peace. It's going to have to wait for the end of War and Peace. Because, you know, I'm nearly halfway through War and Peace. So I, I said, I'll do it after War and Peace. It'll become my next classic to read. But, you know, War and Peace is going to last me most of the rest of the year. Let's be honest. It's a big book. So this is the classic novel of villainy, crime, merriment, lovemaking, jilting, laughing, cheating, fighting and dancing. William Makepeace Thackeray's witty literary classic Vanity Fair is set against the backdrop of the Napoleonic Wars. Sound familiar? And follows anti-heroine and ruthless social climber Becky Sharp as she attempts to claw her way out of poverty and scale the heights of English society. Her story takes her all the way to the court of King George IV via the Battle of Waterloo, breaking hearts and chasing fortunes as she goes. There we go. Why not? Still has to wait till after War and Peace though. Um, Hopeful Hearts at the Cornish Cove, Kim Nash. Again, it's got corn or Cornish in the title. It's going to be added to the collection, even if I don't keep it. This one, second hand, remarkable condition. Bit of edge wear, well, a bit of on the cover there, but the spine's fine, because it is a little book. This won't take long to read. So let's have a look. Meredith's life is at a standstill. She's stuck in a dead end job, approaching 50, and her dating life is a string of disasters. But one evening while browsing the internet, she sees an ad for a lighthouse and in a moment of impulsiveness, she makes a ridiculous bid for it. With the help of local handyman Clem, she sets about renovating as as they work together, a bond begins to form. But when Meredith finds out that Clem is keeping a secret from her, it changes everything. Will they find a way to build something more meaningful together? Sounds good. What else have we got? We've got oh, Patricia Cornwall. A new, it's a gay case, blah, 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 I can't speak. A case car better thriller. It, aren't they all? Uh, flesh and Blood. I do like to read uh, a Patricia Cornwall every now and again. Snap, the sound of a bullet hitting flesh. Dr. Case Garpetta, I've got to say it slowly, otherwise I can't say it, is in pursuit of a sniper who leaves no trace except copper fragments. The impossible shot calls instant death. Snap, the target is closer than you think. The victims have nothing in common and there is no indication where the killer will strike next. Snap. You won't hear it. You're already dead. Scarpetta tracks the sniper across the country to the Florida coast and here she uncovers shocking evidence implicating her niece Lucy. Scarpetta's very own flesh and blood. Uh, Jenny Colgan, Summer Skies. This is currently on sale in um, Tesco actually but I got it. 75p yeah so born into a family of successful pilots Morag is used to flying high but when a tragic accident grounds her could her future suddenly be out of reach when Morag receives a call to say her beloved grandfather has fallen ill she leaves her fast-paced life in London to return home to the tranquil Scottish Highlands with her grandfather out of action Morag has no choice but to take over flying the local route in his rickety old plane ferrying locals across the beautiful island of the Arpeg Ar Ar I can't say that word Archipelago Pe 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 that thing but as the weather <laughs> takes a dramatic turn and I'm usually good with words Morag is forced to crash land on a remote island the only company she has is Gregor the gruff and reclusive ornithon oh. another one ornithologist I can say that one taking care of the island for the season though the pair don't see eye to eye Morag must she seek shelter at his cabin and it seems the pair are stuck together till help arrives however long that may be. As she awaits rescue, might Morag discover that this is exactly the place she needs to be. Um, then we've got, uh, ooh, The Serial Killer's Daughter by Alice Hunter. Uh, is murder in the blood? In a sleepy Devon village, a woman is taken from the streets. Local vet Jenny is horrified. 
this kind of thing doesn't happen here. But it's not the first time she's been so close to a crime scene. The daughter of a prolific serial killer, she spent her whole life running away from who she really is. And the crime is harrowingly similar to the ones her father committed all those years ago. But she's not her father's daughter, is she? I don't know, everybody seems to like those, the couple of books, those serial killer's wife is one as well. And the last book is uh, The Girls by Bella Osborne. Again, charity shop one. I haven't been in there for weeks. I've been so good. It's going to be a reunion for the ages. In the 1970s, the girls were best friends sharing a flat in good times. Zara, the famous diva actor, Val, the uptight solicitor, Jackie, the wild child, and Pauline, the quirky introvert. Now they're in their twilight years, and Zara suggests they live with her to support each other through old age. Initially, being housemates again is just as much fun as in their heyday, but then Zara reveals the real reason she asked them to move into her, and suddenly things take a sinister turn. As the women confront their demons, they come under the spotlight of the press, the police, and an angry parrot. With their lives spiralling out of control, can they save their friendships and each other? Sounds alright, doesn't it? Those are the books I got. Other than the big box of 30 books I got from eBay, which we saw in a previous video, they're all the ones I got. And it's still too many. And I'm tempted to go in the charity shop because I haven't been in there for ages, but I'm going to try not to. Because Paul got mad if I buy any more books. Anyway, I'm really excited. These are some really good books here. I can't wait to get reading. Um, I'm going to do what I never do in the next video, and that's a TBR of things I'm planning to read next. Not necessarily in June, but just next. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.